An old pals here, Billy Deck. And uh, yes. Billy Deck and Jane were whispering to each other, and I feel they were talking about me. <laughs> no, Will Hurts <clears throat> is talking love. about how cute your tush push is. The touch push? Thank what? you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, you're a sports guy. You know the touch push. The touch push is what the Philadelphia Eagles do to get a first down and score a touchdown. You get the guy behind the quarterback sneak, <laughs> and you ram yeah. that guy. Mm. Well, that's the wrong word. You you push that guy's tush to get him across the line. Yeah. I no, I, I knew that, but when she said your tush push, it just took me to a different place. So it was right a now, weird. okay, right now, it's a little it's, yeah, he's visual. been here two minutes. He's I'm, making I'm fun so- of my flat butt. <laughs> No, no. That's what we were talking about. I suffer for a condition. It's called white man's fan. (laughs) I don't know anything about that. (laughs) No, of course you don't. It was an action word, push, (laughs) and then tush, (laughs) and then your name. And Suddenly it's conjunction junction. (laughs) It was, (laughs) yeah. God, I miss you all. Uh, We miss you. It's good to see see you, man. I feel, it's great to see you. It's awesome to be back. I know it. I know you're in and out of town all the time, but you're mostly based out of Nashville now? Uh, yeah, we opened in Sunday Nashville about six years ago. Uh, so I'm there. I mean, it's a 55 minute flight. So I commute. You know, I used to make fun of people who will not make fun, but I felt bad for people who had to commute from the suburbs for yeah. like an right. hour, hour right. and a half. But I kind of do that now, and it just takes the same amount of time. It's not even that bad. And uh, it's so easy to jump on a flight from Nashville, 55 minutes. And then now we are going south. We just opened Sunday Tampa, so it's 55 minutes in the other direction. Okay. So, I was just yeah. in Tampa not long ago, and you and our friend, our mutual pal Roger German, were hanging out. He runs the Florida Aquarium. He used to help run the shed here. He's so shy. So He's where shy is town. for people that know? <laughs> Tampa and the Florida Aquarium right there on the water. Where yeah. is Sunday? Right in that downtown area? It's called Midtown. It's this new development called Midtown. It's right in the middle of everything. It's about, I don't know, like a five-minute drive from the aquarium. Okay. So I actually just went over there and had a very Chicago day with him uh, at work. It was like bring okay. your son, son to work day. I just followed him around. And <laughs> like, you know, I'm sure I had. <laughs> what are we doing now? And, uh, yeah. And <laughs> the people were like, who's this? Who's that strange did you go out, dude? Did you go out on the Dolphin Cruise? Uh, no, there was the biggest storm of all time. It looked like out of a movie, and <laughs> like, we basically took cover and then just so they weren't fish running the dolphin boats. Yeah. Uh, we usually Roger, talk to him when there's a big storm we coming. Do. Yeah. He's our Florida storm guy. Yeah. Oh well, I, um, now that I know, I mean, but that they do was a it. thing there, which you'll know because you're going to be in and out of Tampa all the time, where they run a boat, a li- literally yeah. a Florida aquarium yeah. boat, out yeah. filled with tourists to go out and look at dolphins. And yeah. we went out and we saw two or three schools of dolphins. Well, that's the most amazing thing. It's like, <clears> hey, <throat> come on this ride. And usually you have to have it prepped so it actually turns out well. <laughs> and, and he actually, it works like naturally. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the, the dolphins actually show up. Because what if they don't? Right. Like, it, sorry. Oh, can so I get my money back? Oh, so nah. you're saying, you may know, because I don't, you're saying the dolphins are actors. No, well, I'm just, no, they're, they're super cooperative. <laughs> they're super These are collaborative. staff dolphins. <laughs> they're, they're collaborative they're dolphins. staff dolphins. <laughs> Roger just does a little whistle, and they are like, okay, yeah. we're here. Yeah. 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 It's oh. not out of the question. I'm glad oh. you're not striking. Oh. Um, and I'm a union member, and I'm saying that. So th- three Sundays and another Sunday on the way. Because the original Sunday here in Chicago has been six years? How long has It's been the forever. Oh like it's 12 been, years. 15, 15 years. years. Yeah, okay. yeah fo- like 14 and a half years. I've wow. Been counting. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, the 14 and a half years ago, we're River North. And now we're actually designing a new Sunday in Fulton Market with this wonderful woman named Carol Karen Harold. And she... It's been 50, it's been over 15 since we've designed a new Sunda in Chicago. And this one's really awesome. Right there in the meatpacking district. In, when you say, uh, cool. well, the west side is so hot, right? But yeah. uh, when you say uh, design a yeah. different vibe to the room? Yeah. Oh, every new Sunda has its own vibe. So in Sunda Tampa, because of the surroundings, we made it more vintage Polynesian. Like the whole place feels like a vacation and the wall disappears. Like it's all open aired. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, Tampa, Tampa's changed, by the way, because I know a million people just rolled their eyes when we said Tampa, because old Tampa was different. It um, was not, well, it was known for other things. And now it's really kind of, you know, evolved quickly and all these restaurateurs and hotels and tons of people moving there. Yeah. It's it's really beautiful. During COVID after COVID, a lot of, a lot of people moving to Tampa. No, no, true story. Uh, And uh, as far as recovery goes in Chicago, specifically post COVID hundred percent, you're all good. Yes, but it was very tough. I mean, remember we were uh, looted and pipes burst and the whole place shut down for so long. And we had to rebuild from scratch. I thought it was over. 
I literally mm. thought it was over and I had to go find a job because we, I, and I didn't know what that would be, but we, we just stayed at it and we kept the family together because we engaged in a lot of uh, philanthropic feeding of the community. We fed the hospitality industry. Um, it started with a hundred people a week and then it grew to 500 people a night and it really sort of kept us together. So that, that's nice. So we still have people with us for 15 years. Well, it's cool too because you have such a great drive, and you, you know, like not you, you're a great leader for your team, for the community, and you're always like, "What's the? What can I do to help?" And that's always kind of been something that you do great. Uh, yeah, I think growing up in the city, there were especially now, and I know we're going to talk about this documentary that just is coming out. Um, I really started from scratch and worked wherever I could, starting from sixth grade as a coach at kid, and I. Just I told him need- go to work in fifth grade, you slacker. <laughs> I, I just needed people to <clears throat> help me have jobs and opportunity, and so I just think I owe everyone mm. in the city. So well, I constantly know, and, and uh, you know you remind me of my friend Bill Rancic, who I know you know as well, yeah. uh, who's got his joints in town, and um, you know even goes back to Buffett um, uh, with all of the Buffett joints, when you take care of the people that take care of you, yeah. the payback is tenfold. Yeah. And yeah. I think also learning, I, by the way, I'm going back to this whole sort of documentary thing again is go, going back and understanding the culture of my family, um, from the Philippines, there, there are very, it was very inherently caring. Like it was just sort of inherent. We were there to, uh, help and it it's just something that like kind of flowed through the heritage and the DNA of 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 the culture and so it it really fit and I think it fits with Midwest hospitality um, and I think the Midwest hospitality flows right down mm-hmm. with through Nashville and Tampa those are uh, strategic uh, decisions because in Tampa there's quite a bit of Chicago sure. hospitality and culture sure. that runs through it yeah. I want to talk about the documentary. Well, we're going to get to that after the break. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was going to talk to you first about acting in general, because the last time we talked, you yeah. were kind of sticking more than your foot in. What's going on? Uh, so I did a really cool um, movie here with a bunch of Chicago actors. Uh, most of my scenes were with Billy Zane on the north side. Uh, and that with the strike and all kind of... Um, I think paused, but they're going to launch that like any day as soon as they're allowed to talk about, okay. <laughs> you know, film and stuff like You'll that. You'll tell us sure. about that so, when we can. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. And that one, um, I think we'll have very funny uh, things to talk about because it's a great crew. All Chicago, <laughs> they all come, everyone came back. Well, so and, what is it, what, the, the restaurant tour life, is it so demanding and so much of a time suck that you don't have time to chase stuff that's fun like that? I'm not saying the restaurant it, life's not it, fun, it, but there's so yeah. much involved in running restaurants and restaurant group. Yeah, well, there's a time here that I did have a restaurant group, and I had like eight different concepts and 800 employees, and we we're all over the place, and mm-hmm. that really was a discombobulated, distracting sort of mess of a, of, of a tornado kind of life. Uh, but I made a strategic decision with some really wonderful, kind advisor, mentor sorts that helped me decide what my life path might evolve towards and be a more happy and in control person. And it really revolved around my culture, heritage, and Sunda specifically. Mm -hmm. So Sunda New Asian to me was like my heritage, my DNA. It didn't really feel like work. I really love it. And yeah, I grew up sort of being made fun of for some of the things that we had in a Filipino household, cooking with a different language being spoken. And it made me push away in the beginning. But now... People are really celebrating, sure. especially the the genre of well, you get of older. Asian American. You get yeah. older, embrace who you are. Right? And, yeah, and it, yes, yes. People 100%. embrace their cultures nowadays. Yeah. In the past, people say, oh, "I moved away, like I'm Greek. We're not Greek anymore." But now, everyone embraces who they are. Yes, we all want that. So, yeah. if you remember behind the music on uh, VH1, when we come back, yes. Billy Dick <laughs> <laughs> talks about a documentary <laughs> filled with surprises. Mm. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm just so seat. anxious. Edge of your seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edge of my seat. Billy Dex here. Billy, if you turn around, see that guy in the newsroom right there, Nick Gill? Yes. Hi. Hi. Heidi Ho. Nick knows from the Philippines. How long did you live there, Nick? A month? What? About a month. That never happens. I never meet people. Como esta Oh, mabute. I don't know what either one of you said. Nope, me neither. Yeah. He said tush push in Tagalog. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Uh, favorite so food from the Philippines, uh, Nick Gill? Lumpia. Oh, wow. Uh, that's like one of the things I grew up with here in Chicago. And what is lumpia? 
It's like a Chinese inspired Filipino egg roll mm-hmm. made with pork and vegetables, shrimp. Sounds Very great. Sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate <laughs> you bringing some over. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we can make that happen. Uh, um, and breakfast. favorite thing about the Philippines, I think Nick, you've told us before, the people, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Everybody's, you know, just friendly American ties. You know what I mean? And second was monsoon season? Monsoon season. We were yes. walking down the streets and it's flooded and you're just yeah. drinking in the street. It's San Miguel and. There you go. 7,641 islands yeah. of beauty. Is that right? Yes, sir. I did not know that. It's wow. gorgeous. A uh, new documentary, Food Roots. Tell me about it. I had a lifetime of going back and forth to the islands of the Philippines, come back to Chicago, grew up with my Lola, who's my grandmother here. But I think in making lumpia and other things at home, it was the best ever. But once you start hitting eighth grade and like high school and you start doing sleepovers and people are like, what is that? Like it's be making fun of this, you know, the looks or the smells and you begin to start to push away from the culture and the culinary. We talked about this, you know, you just try to fit in. And, um, you know, over time that just kind of compounds and I got to be an adult and I went back into sort of celebrating Asian culture with Sunda uh, 15 years ago. And there's a small part carved out for Filipino food and it became more and more, um, important to me. And one day, um, two of my last three elders died in the Philippines mm-hmm. on the same day. Oh, and wow. I just dropped everything. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, right. I, I want to know more and learn more. So I went back to find family and learn the recipes of my ancestors. And I had a camera on because I wouldn't remember how it would be done. By, and and uh, it then the camera just started capturing everything and all sorts of craziness unfolded. It, and now it's a doc. It's a beautifully made film. The The videography is just stunning and gorgeous. I love that you're you're interacting with your family members. You're meeting new new ones. There's, yeah. a, there's in fact, one part of it where you're in a photo in one of the homes. You're like, there I am when I'm three. So it must have been like super cool for you to go back and then learn all of these secret recipes that you can bring back and, and kind well, of carry on the tradition. Right? It's super emotional. We did some private pre-screenings in LA, Chicago, and Nashville, and you could hear people laughing and crying and sniffling at the same time. It's just everyone has their own personal journey, you know, and mm-hmm. and they could relate to this idea of identity and connectivity with their family and their heritage. And it really, I think, makes people think, like, well, what what did my ancestors make? Like, what what did they do? And how do I preserve that and bring it forward? And, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely had these discoveries that were just out cr- crazy. I was in mountains and beaches on boats and motorcycles just tra- tracking down people and recipes and things. Um, but there were family stories, gems, findings, surprises. Um, it was quite fascinating. Um, and any, then just- dr- any draw, any pull, any tug to go, you know what, I have to live here. I mean, you got your whole life here, you got your business here, your soul is here, or is your soul there? What was, is that a pull? Uh, is, that a, is that something that tugs at you? It has. What I was, so I remember I, I was uh, pointing about the president in 2014 to be uh, advisor for Asian American Pacific Islanders mm-hmm. and the White House Building Prevention Task Force. And then I was going there like four times a year, three, four, five times a year. And I was like, and then slowly things evolved and I was able to do work on my computer and on my phone mm-hmm. and I was like do I need to not be able to be here but um, I think the world's just gotten so much smaller that it's more uh, you're just more able to be uh, anywhere in the world and still be able to communicate and work and live so um, I, I see that as a possibility but uh, it also just says you don't have to it's Sunday far. Manila open on no, uh, Saturday <laughs> he's going to have it done by Saturday <laughs> you know, four that- eight hours I, I'm not saying that's an impossibility, by the way. I know not. You know. I like the idea, too, because this is an inspiring film to find your food roots. So yes. if we can see what you went through, and then it'll inspire others to perhaps go back and find their own, even if it's just on the south side of Chicago, right? Wherever that Absolutely. was. Yeah, wherever your soul is. It's Absolutely. Exactly right. Right. I don't care yeah. if you're, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter where you're from. Right. Those stories from generations ago are super informing. And unique to you. And that helps you have more identity confidence. Mm -hmm. And then the whole idea, especially with the White House Bullying Prevention Task Force, speaking to kids across the country, a lot of the reasons why there was this abuse of an imbalance of power was that there weren't good stories or content to help teach people about the diversity that exists. 
And it really becomes about making sure that diverse content exists in a positive, exciting way so it's shareable. So hopefully people will all go back and find out these gems and then come to the dinner table with all these diverse guests that food brings together and tell these way more colorful stories. And I think that will help be part of the solution to help create more content, more storytelling around more diverse you know, cultural things. I know Jane agrees. Every time you're around Billy, and it's not that often, he's a busy guy. Yeah. But you always wish you were around him more. Yeah. Very positive guy. Well, it's motivating. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm doing this. Yeah. Where, where can we see the film? Well, the uh, Chicago International Film Fest that I've loved forever is actually uh, gave us two showings because the first one sold out. So wow. that's October 19th. I got tickets for you. And don't worry, so you got to come. Uh, uh, but uh, in October 21st. So you can go to foodrootsfilm.com to get tickets. Those are selling out quick, though. I so I really hope people can come. And we just found out last night that we won the audience award at the Nashville Film Fest. Oh, that's cool. So that's very amazing. cool. Amazing. Yeah, it's a cool Chicago story connected with the other side of the world. And it. it's just amazing. And our friend, too. And then you, you're... you're <clears throat> Production company, agency, co-op. Yeah, I created a, quick, a creative yeah. agency right here in cool. Chicago because there's so many oh. creative, amazing people that yeah. have come through this city and now have dispersed across the world. So I basically created this uh, company that is was for the future, but now it seems totally normal because it was, you know, in 2018, I'd be like, yeah, it's a remote company on Zoom. And people were like, we don't get it. <laughs> that, well, you know, sometimes you get too far scam. ahead of the curve. Maybe the curve starts to catch <laughs> yeah. up. So um, 2020 helped help push that one. But if yeah, you want sure to you have a great dinner, great lunch. Yeah. Are you, you open for lunch? You know, we haven't been open for lunch I for, didn't think during so. COVID. So but, redo, um, redo. but yeah, we're open for dinner. And <laughs> then pretty soon, Sunday Fulton is opening up. And that'll be open for dinner, too. So you'll come That's back, tell us great. when you're open in Fulton? Yes. I'm bringing food. I'm bringing lumpia. <laughs> so I don't know no why. Jackfruit, not, though. Say what? No, no jackfruit. jackfruit. Uh, no, I don't. No, I nobody likes jackfruit. Not, not my I don't know why. Oh, Jackfruit's Billy's made out face of, just went down. It's He's made out like... of jackrabbits, right? Is that how they do it? <laughs> yeah. Only people that do the push tush, the tush push, will eat the jackfruit. Uh, oh, well, now we got all sorts of problems. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Billy Deck, it's what? a pleasure to see you. For all things you do Love and it. how to follow you and keep up with you on social and other places, where do you send folks? Just to, I guess my name is just Billy Deck, D-E-C, and it's all the social platforms and or billydeck.com or sundaynewasian.com typical uh, yeah. billy over the top plug well if you want to just go to uh, yeah, go billy i feel, Deck, I I feel like I know. Wanna, we're not I mean, doing enough if you want to but if you want to you can be in the d oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like I'm He's not so doing pushy. enough. I don't. I, I'm worried about Billy not sleeping. Oh no, he sleeps fine. And by know. the way, your ADD gonna... is only marginally better. I know because mine's worse than yours. <laughs> I, I I feel like I'm improving. Look, I'm drinking tea now I instead see, of coffee. That's that. moving towards health. That's part of ADD. Always is looking it? to improve. Ah, darn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gonna go back. Your to symptoms that. are strong, Ellie. my friend. Uh, great to see Thank you. Dude. I love seeing you. Thanks for coming over. Appreciate it. And congratulations. Thank you. Get tickets before they're gone to this this documentary, this must-see documentary, this Nashville award-winning documentary, Food Roots. Thank you. All right, man. All the best. And if you want to follow Miss Billy Deck, we have Billy Deck. Okay. (laughs)